May be seated. If you're turning your Bibles to Matthew chapter 8, Matthew chapter 8, I want to talk to you today about the compassion of Jesus. The compassion of Jesus. There is a pathway to miracles and compassion. The compassion of Jesus is one of those pathways. Of course, we have to use our faith, but I, I, I know we're people of faith, but I said, Lord, I'm using my faith. And when God began to deal with me on the subject of compassion, I said, Lord, I'm using my faith, but heal me on the basis of your compassion. Hallelujah. So I hope this is a word for you and the Holy Ghost will talk to you this morning because the pathway to miracles includes many things. And one of those is compassion of Jesus. Jesus performed many of his miracles because of his compassion. When Jesus saw the multitude as sheep with no shepherd, the Bible says he was moved with compassion and he healed every sickness and every disease. So it's the compassion of the Lord that saves and heals us. When Jesus fed the 5,000 men plus the women and the children and the 4,000 men plus the women and the children, he was moved with compassion. When the two blind men by the wayside cried out, Lord, open our blinded eyes. He had compassion on them, touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes were open. When Jesus came off the Mount of Transfiguration, he saw a little boy that was bound by a dumb spirit, and that spirit would, would take him, throw him in the fire, and throw him down on the ground. He would foam at the mouth. It was a demonic spirit. He asked his daddy, he said, how long has it been this way? He said, since he was a child. And the daddy said, Lord, if you can do anything, listen to this, have compassion on us and help us. And immediately, because of his compassion, and that man asked for compassion, immediately Jesus healed that boy that was under influence of a demonic spirit. Hallelujah. When Jesus saw the funeral procession, the widow of Nain, the Bible says the Lord saw her and was moved with compassion. She had lost her husband. Now she's lost her only son. She has no one to care for her in that culture. And Jesus saw her, and his heart was moved with compassion. And Jesus said, weep not. Hallelujah. He touched his coffin, and he raised that young man from the dead. Maybe you've got some dreams that are dead. I want to tell you, God resurrects dreams. God can resurrect anything God is the resurrection and the life. His name is Jesus. Go on and praise him. Hallelujah. Oh, I love this one right here. This was who I was in the story of the prodigal son. When the father saw his son coming home who had been living a life of sin, the father had compassion. He arose and he ran to that boy. The boy said, Father, I have sinned against you and I've sinned against heaven. But the father kissed him. He hugged him. He put a robe on his back. He put shoes on his feet. He put a ring on his hand. Said, let us rejoice and be merry. My son that was lost is now found, and he's come back home. Maybe you're away from God. This is your day to come back home to the loving arms and the merciful arms of God Almighty. This is a picture of the compassion of the Lord Jesus Christ for every lost sinner. And no matter how far down you've gone, God is waiting and God is looking for you to come home. Hallelujah, my Lord. These are all beautiful accounts about the compassion of Jesus. And when I begin to, to, to think on this and the Holy Ghost began to move my heart to study it out, I looked at these accounts to see what was it, how did it happen, what was it that moved the Lord Jesus Christ in this way. God in the flesh came to, to save, seek, and save that which was lost. But, you know, I looked at all these stories, but for some reason the Holy Ghost put the healing of the leper, that's in Matthew chapter 8, he put it in Mark chapter 1, and put it in Luke chapter 3. And when God puts a story in the Bible in three different places, I said, God, if you're going to do that, I'm going to study all three accounts. Hallelujah. The leper 
used his faith in this story to invest in a miracle. Look at me with Matthew 8 and 1. Talking about Jesus. When he was come down from the mountains, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him. Worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou will, you can make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand. This is a leper, untouchable. Jesus put, oh, my God. Some people go down so far, they, they think I'm untouchable. But Jesus put forth his hand, touched him, saying, I will be thy clean. And immediately that leprosy was healed. Look at Matthew 8 and 4. Jesus saith unto him, see thy tell no man. Don't stop and tell it to anyone right now. But go your way. Show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. Jesus said, now don't you stop and tell anybody about what's happened. Go see the priest and let him look at you. Then Jesus said, I want you to offer the gift that Moses commanded the people. And when you offer this gift, the, the priest will pronounce you clean. And then you can go and tell others about what the Lord has done for you. You can tell them. I'm healed, and the, the fact that you have that clean bill of health from the priest under that Old Testament there, then you can, the people around you will know you're clean, and they don't have to be afraid of you. My subject this morning, the compassion of Jesus. Let us pray. Father, I need that anointing that comes from the Holy Ghost. Lord Jesus, speak through these lips of clay. Lord, this is your word. Let it be like fire shut up in my bones. Let it come out of my mouth like a sharp two-edged sword. Let it split soul and spirit asunder. Lord, save the law. Sanctify the believers. Oh, God, fill people with the Holy Ghost. Do the miracles that only you can do. And, Lord, many times you did them because of compassion. Give us an ear to hear. And we ask all of this and thank you for it. In the name of Jesus. And the church said in Jesus' name, amen. I love the Bible. I love the Bible because the Bible is full of miracles. There have been many times in my life that I've needed a miracle. There have been many other times that people call me and ask me for miracles. My cousin called me this morning, and, and, and we prayed over the phone. He thought, you know, pray for me, Jerry. I said, I'll pray right now. And we prayed. People need your prayers. People need for for others to intercede for them. And when you start calling upon the name of Jesus, God goes into action. God responds to prayer. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. God gave man dominion. Man's sin gave the keys of the world to the devil. And that's a real devil. And he goes about seeking whom he made a vow. That's why you need good Holy Ghost preaching. You need to hear a word from God. You need to be in a place where the Spirit of God is moving because that's a real devil, and he's out to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, don't get me mixed up with him. I'm come that you might have life. Go on, shout, praise God, and have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. Bible's full of miracles. And John, John, in his gospel, he tells us about Th these miracles. And then he said, many other signs did Jesus, which are not written in this book. But listen to this now. Listen very carefully. These are written that you might believe and that believing you might have eternal life through Jesus Christ. You might have his Zoe, the godlike life in you. So you are not like the world. You'll be different if you believe in Jesus and get his life in you, you'll get his miracle working power in you. You'll get his anointing in you. You'll get his mind in you. You'll be part of his body, bone of his bone, and flesh of his flesh. And you can move into a dimension the world cannot move in. Somebody go and praise God. John said, these things are written that you might believe. That's why I preach. To get your faith out there. Hallelujah. Many people think Jesus performed his miracles just to prove that he was the son of God. No, he didn't. He did not do that. Jesus knew who he was. Hallelujah. The devil tried to get him to, to doubt. He said, it is written. It is written. It is written. Jesus knew who he was. When he said, we're going over to the other side of the sea, 
The devil tried to stop it with a great storm. Jesus knew who he was. He said, we're going over and praise God. They went through the storm. And sometimes you'll have to go through a storm. They came out the other side. Every one of them had been saved, praise God, from that storm. Because Jesus knew who he was. And Jesus was on board. And Jesus wants you to know who you are and what he has done for you. Jesus performed his miracles because he had compassion for the lost and the sick. And the miracles in the Bible, they are put there to show us how to believe. Jesus performed thousands of miracles, but only a few of those miracles are given in the Bible. How and why did God choose to put certain miracles in the Bible and not put the others? There are 37 to 40 major miracles that are listed in this Bible. Amen. But God chose these special miracles, thinking about the suffering, sighing, dying, crying humanity of all ages. He chose what to put in the Bible, and he chose special miracles that would show us how to believe and how to release our faith and how to touch God. Hallelujah. I love my Bible. This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. And I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Go on, praise God that you got a Bible that tells about the wonderful miracles of God. If one of these miracles don't fit your case, guess what? Another one will. If one of them doesn't touch you, another one will. If one of them does not reveal your need, another one of his miracles will. There's enough of them in the Bible to show somebody on the pathway of life how to get their miracle from the hand of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe God in his providence that he has us here today to hear the word of God. I, I said, God, while I'm preaching, give me new revelation. Hallelujah. Give the people revelation. I pray that the eyes of our understanding might be open and enlightened, that we may know the hope of his calling, the glory of our inheritance and the riches that we have in Christ Jesus our Lord. Oh, God, you've gathered us here today in your providence to hear the word. And I believe God is going to show us how to get our miracles, the miracles that we need in life. And here's one of those miracles that I want to preach about. The Bible says Jesus came down from the mountaintop and a great multitude followed him. They were, had all types of need. Many of them were sick, but they weren't sick alike. Look at this. Matthew 8 and 1. When he came down from the mountaintop, great multitudes followed him. And if great multitudes followed Jesus when he was on this earth, if we will preach the same Jesus that identified him, identifies him as the one who was here on earth, great multitudes will follow him today. I believe that with all my heart because of the compassion and the mercy of Jesus Christ. If we will preach the Bible Jesus, thousands will come to him. Hallelujah. Yet today in many churches, Jesus is hidden behind the curtain of religion. Many times he is hidden behind this curtain and that curtain and this denominational belief and this denominational doctrine is until we have a denominational Jesus. I'm not looking for a denominational Jesus. I'm not looking for a religious Jesus. I'm looking for the Jesus of the Bible. Hallelujah. And I'm here to tear down the curtains of unbelief. And we are tearing down curtains, religious curtains, so that the world can see the Bible Jesus as he is. Hallelujah. And when you see the Bible Jesus, when people really see him, when they see his love, his compassion, and his mercy, people will follow him and great multitudes will come when they see the miracle working power of God. We don't need religion. We need a fresh touch of fire that comes from the glory world. We need Pentecostal anointing. We need the compassion and the mercy of Jesus. We need for Jesus to come and walk among the golden candlesticks of his church and touch his people. I've had people tell me when I preach revivals, I got healed while you were preaching. 
I got my miracle while you were preaching. I got an answer from God. The natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit. The things that God gives you, they have to come from the spirit world. They have to be spiritually anointed. And when they touch your head, they'll touch your heart. And you'll see Jesus as the Bible Jesus. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. He's a healing, compassionate, loving, delivering, tender-hearted Jesus. And great multitudes followed him when they saw him. My desire today, and in every sermon I preach, it is to bring you the Jesus of the Bible. And to let you know that Jesus can and Jesus will meet your need. Hallelujah. And let's talk about this leper. And let's look at how he got healed, how he got his miracle. If you will do what people in the Bible did with Jesus, you will get what people in the Bible got from Jesus. Number one, this leper, he came to Jesus. Hallelujah. He came to where Jesus was. A lot of people say, well, if I can just get to brother so-and-so, and, and they're chasing signs and wonders. No signs and wonders follow us. Hallelujah. I, let me say that again. Don't go off chasing something. If you got a good church, you need it there. Don't go chasing an elusive butterfly. Come to where the power of God is. Get on an anointed man of God. Get on an anointed word and get your miracle from God. Some people say, if I can just get to where supernatural things are happening and angels are being manifested. No, it's not coming to some certain person or some denomination or some church. You need a good church. You need a church where the power of the Lord is present to save and to heal. But this leper, the Bible says he came to Jesus. In other words, he came to the right source. The Bible says he came to Jesus. A lot of people Jesus want Jesus to help them, but they won't come to him. Some people say, oh, brother, brother, pastor, I, I'm such a bad sinner. I, I've lived such a wicked life. I, I'm so unworthy. Well, I've got good news. Jesus has qualified you, and Jesus has made you worthy. God thought you were worth something. Hallelujah. Sometimes religion will say you're unworthy, you're nothing. You, yes, you're the apex of God's creation. That's who you are. And Jesus sees the multitude even today as he sits in his high priestly position at the right hand of God the Father. He's mediating for the sinner. He's praying for you right now. He's bridged the gap, sinner friend. He's interceding for the saint. He sees your need. He's touched with the feeling of your infirmities. He knows you're lying down. He knows you're rising up. He infinitely cares about you. And if he'll clothe the lilies of the valley and feed the fowls of the air, Jesus said, how much more does your father care about you? Go on and get a picture of the father and his great love. Hallelujah. Look at Isaiah 53 and 5. The prophet said, Isaiah 53 and 5, he was wounded for our transgression. Doesn't matter how far down you go. He was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Look at verse 6. This is powerful right here. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. We were all separated from God. There is none righteous. No, not one. Everyone needs a Savior. I've had people that were brought up in the church say, I don't know when I was saved. I just assumed I was. I can take you to the place. I can tell you the time. Praise God. I come out of darkness into the marvelous light. Can I get a testimony? Hallelujah. If you don't know where you were saved, praise God. You need to come to the altar. Let that nail scarred tent touch you. You will never, 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 never be the same. Somebody go and praise God. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. Oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened. Woo! Now I know. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. 
something happened and now i know he touched me and he made me whole look at your neighbor and tell him he touched me hallelujah <laughs> Woo! you see christ died for the ungodly he took our sins he took our iniquities upon himself so this leper he comes to jesus and notice what he did he worshiped number one he came to jesus number two he worshiped he worshiped him this leper fell down and worshiped jesus you see there's so much power in worship when this leper fell down before jesus and worshiped him he was saying jesus i submit my total life to you i love you here is my life i'm giving my life to you i fall down on my face and i worship you you are my savior and now i make you lord of my life you're the son of the living god i'm just a created being with a great need but here i am jesus I've come to you, and I worship you. Hallelujah. My Lord, this man humbled himself under the mighty hand of God that in due season he could get the miracle that he needed. If you want a miracle from God, begin to worship. Begin to bow down before him. Begin to yield your life to him. And say, Jesus, I've lived my own life. I've done my own thing. I've gone my own way. I've lived for myself, for the world, for the devil and the flesh. But now, Jesus, I am bowing before you. And I submit my entire life to you. And, Lord, I worship you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want you to notice this man who was worshipped worshiping jesus and i want you to notice what he had he had leprosy he had leprosy and that was one of the worst diseases of that day it's like having aids today it's uncurable he had an incurable disease so let's pick his story up in luke's gospel it's in three of the gospels let's look at luke's account luke said he was full of leprosy. Now, Luke was a medical doctor, and that's the doctor talking. He was full of leprosy. That's the doctor's report, okay? Look at Luke 5 and 12. It came to pass when he was in a certain city. Behold, a man full of leprosy, who seeing Jesus fell on his face and besought him, saying, Lord, if you will you can make me clean. <laughs> now, that's how the world is today. They, they got denominational curtains, the denominational glasses, and, and opinions of people that don't amount to a hill of beans sometimes. Thousands and thousands of people know that God has the power to heal them, but they don't know whether or not he is willing to meet them, save them, and to heal them or not. But this leprosy knew that God could, and he said, if you will, you can heal me. In the pathway to miracles, you've got to know the will of God. And I've got the book here, 66 books, praise God, the, the, the Old and the New Testament. And I know what this book says about the will of God, and I'll share some of it with you again, hallelujah. In the pathway of miracles, you've got to know the will of God. And if you're sitting in a church that tells you that God doesn't heal and that it might not be God's will to heal you, get out of that place. Run from it as hard and as far as you can. Amen. You need to base your faith on the word of God and not what some man-made doctrine has come up with. Amen. This leper cried out, Jesus if you will, you can make me whole. 
He had to find out the will of God. He had to get an answer to this thing that was troubling him. I'm sure as he made his way to Jesus, I know how the devil talks, don't you? The devil kept saying, he's not going to heal you. Why are you wasting your time even asking him? He healed a blind man. He healed a lame man. But he's not going to heal you. You're full of leprosy. Your body's been eaten up. Your nose is gone. Your ears are gone. Your toes are gone. Look at you. You're a mess. And there's no hope for you. Look. Your fingers have fallen off. Look. Look. Look at your body. Do you think he's going to heal you? It's too late for you. You're an outcast of society. Nobody wants to help you, and nobody even wants to touch you. This man was desperate. I love desperate faith. He was desperate, and he kept on coming to Jesus. This man was untouchable. Woo! But Jesus touched him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, my Lord and my God. He was untouchable, but Jesus reached out. Woo! And touch. I felt untouchable. Have you ever been there when you feel like that you're not any good, that life has dealt you so much and, and your dreams are gone, your heart is broken, and, and you're dealing with traumas from things that you had to do, things that you were just called into a situation to do? That's what war does to the veterans. Pray for our veterans. Pray for this United States of America. Pray for the military. Pray for people who see these traumatic things and have to deal with them. This leper came to Jesus, and Jesus touched. <laughs> Woo! Jesus touched the untouchable. Now, let's, let's look at Mark's gospel. Mark 141. Jesus was moved with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him, and said unto him, I will be thou clean. Jesus said, I will. The leper said, if you will. Jesus counsel that if you will. For every generation, he counseled that if. Because the word of God is forever settled in heaven. I, I love this story because it reveals God's willingness to heal this leper. It's in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. The three synoptic gospels all have an account of it. That's one for the father, one for the son. And one for the Holy Ghost. Are you stretching that? No, I believe the entire Trinity, and I know the entire Trinity is involved in your salvation and in your healing. Look at Acts 10, 38. How God, that's the Father, anointed Jesus of Nazareth, that's the Son, with the Holy Ghost and with power, that's the Spirit, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. How many? All that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. There is the Trinity in unity for salvation, for healing, for any miracle you will ever need. Hallelujah. I love my Bible. Jesus said to this leper, I will be thy made whole. One translation said the leper said, Jesus, you can make me well if you want to. Jesus said, I want to. <laughs> I like that. I want to. Jesus said, I want to. And then Jesus does the most wonderful thing. Here's this man full of leprosy who had to stand afar off away from the crowd. And he had to cry out, unclean, unclean, I'm unclean. Stay away. Don't come near me. I've got leprosy. I'm unclean. I'm unclean. And, and, and when that happened, people would scatter like flies. You know, I thought about today. The church age day we live in today, some people are afraid to come back to church because of COVID-19. They're scattered like sheep without a shepherd. It shame on you if you don't come back to the house of God when you go to the entertainment centers and you go out to the beaches and you go out to the shopping mall and, and you go about your business from day to day and say, I'm afraid to come to church. Let me tell you something about me. He saved me. Heal me. Turn my life around. Set my feet up on the solid ground. I'd be afraid not to come and worship him. Forsake not the sending of yourself together as the man of some is, but much the more exhorting one another as you see that day approaching. What day is he talking about? 
Jesus Christ is about to split that eastern sky. But whether he comes in the rapture, in the moment of death, whether I live, I live unto the Lord. Whether I die, I die unto the Lord. And I'm going to his house, and I'm going to fall down, and I'm going to worship him. I'm going to get with people of like precious faith. Go on and praise him. I'm preaching to the choir this morning. Hallelujah. My Lord. What I want you to know is this. God knows all your battles. God knows all the dark hours. He knows all your troubles. He knows all the things that bother you. He knows all of that. He knows all about it. But he has moved with compassion towards you. If you're watching by live stream today and you're not in church and you're so discouraged you don't know what to do, I want to tell you something. God knows all about it. He's moved with compassion. And that's why God has you listening today. Hallelujah. God wants you to hear about his mercy and about his love. And Jesus was moved with compassion. And he reached out and he touched the untouchable. Some people, they've gone down so far and done so many things wrong. Some of you, you've disobeyed God. You've run from God. You've blasphemed God. You've cursed his name. You've done so many terrible things. And you're saying to yourself, he doesn't care anything about me. How could anyone care about me? I'm so untouchable. I want you to know something. Jesus cares. No matter where you are, Jesus cares. No matter what you've done, Jesus cares. No matter how far down you've gone into the cesspool of sin and iniquity, Jesus cares. Jesus will touch you. Yes, he will. He will touch you. I know he will, because <laughs> he touched me, and he touched many of you, and some of you out there, he's been with you with his mercy and compassion, but you need a touch, and some of you need another touch. I go back, I say, Lord, I need another touch. Look at Matthew 8 and 3. Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thy clean, and immediately his leprosy was cleansed. The Bible says, Immediately, his leprosy was cleansed. It departed, and he was made whole. Thank God for instantaneous miracles. We've seen them many times in this place, but they don't all come instantly. Sometimes they begin when faith is exercised. And then you have the trial of faith that you'll have to go through. And you just hold on to the word of God. That an unchanging hand of Jesus, you just hold on until your miracle is manifest. Look at Hebrews 10, 36. For you have need of patience that after you have done the will of the Father, you might receive the promise. What is his will? Without faith, it's impossible to please him. He that cometh to God must believe that he is. You must believe in an invisible, unseen God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. If you will seek him, I promise you, he said, you shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart, and he will reward you for your faith and for your diligence. So sometimes healing is not instantly manifested, but it begins in the realm of faith. And you just hold on to the word of God, and the main thing is this, the miracle is on the way. I said the main thing is this. Your miracle is on the way. There's a miracle in the making. One just for you. The Father is working right now. And he's working on your miracle. You are important to God. Jesus Christ hung on an old rugged cross. He spared not his own son. He delivered him up for us all. If you had been the only person 
that needed salvation, Jesus would have gone to that cross. If you'd been the only person, he would. How do you know that, Pastor? Because the angels in heaven rejoice every time one soul comes in. Woo! Won't you come in? Won't you come to Jesus? Come to Jesus, hallelujah, and get your miracle. Number one, this leper, he came to Jesus. Number two, he worshiped him. Number three, he obeyed the Lord. Jesus touched him. I, I, I love that. Immediately. <laughs> His leprosy was cleansed. Now notice what Jesus said to him. Jesus had to fulfill the law in every condition to be the Savior. That Old Testament law required that if you were a leper, you had to go to the priest and he had to pronounce you clean. That's the only way you could go back into society. Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest that you may offer the gift of the sacrifice that Moses commanded you. Jesus hasn't been to the cross. He's fulfilling the Old Testament laws, okay? Not the ceremonial laws, <laughs> the laws. Amen. Look at Matthew 8 and 4. Jesus said unto him, go thy way, show thyself to the priest, offer the gift that Moses commanded. Why? For a testimony unto him. See, the Lord is interested in our, us giving our testimony. He wants you to witness. He wants you to tell people what he's done for you. On your journey, he wants you to be sanctified, holy, so you can become a light to the world around you. Shake off the old, put off the old, put on the new. Hallelujah. Put off the old man and his deceitful lust. Put on the new man that's created in truth and righteousness. Put on. The world's greatest put on is put on Jesus. I said the world's greatest put on is put on Jesus. Go on, praise him. Hallelujah. Lord is interested in our testimony. He wants you to give your testimony. Tell it on the mountains. Tell it in the city. Tell it in the field. Tell it wherever you go. And never be ashamed to testify for Jesus. Tell it. Tell it for testimony what he's done. God is interested in your testimony. Jesus said to this leper, go show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifice that Moses commanded you. And don't tell anyone yet. Don't tell anyone until the priest pronounces you clean is what he was saying. Look at Mark 145. But he, the leper, went out. I mean, this man's excited. He, be he began to publish it so much. And blaze abroad the matter in so much that Jesus could no more openly enter the city, but was without in a desert place. Look at this. Because of this one miracle. And they came to him from every quarter. This man was so excited that he got healed, he couldn't contain it. He began to tell everybody. Look, look, I'm healed. Praise God. You remember me? I'm healed. Jesus has healed me. I had an incurable disease. Jesus cleansed me. Jesus healed me. Jesus has made me whole. Hallelujah. This man was overcome by this miracle, and he began to testify everywhere he went and tell about the goodness, the mercy, and the compassion of Jesus. And guess what? When he did that, people came to Jesus from every direction. God wants us all. To have a miracle. And this story, out of these three accounts, it shows us the pathway to miracles. Sinner friends, suffering saint, whatever you need. Number one, come to Jesus. Come with all your heart. Bring him all your need. Number two, Worship him. Say, today I receive you as my Savior. And I say, Lord, I know it's your will to save me. I know it's your will to heal me. I've heard the word of God. You see, that leper, Jesus said, I will. And God is no respect of person. If he'll do it for one, he'll do it for another. Lord, I know you will, and I worship you, and I receive my miracle today. Number three, obey him. And if you will do that, 
if you will come, if you will worship, and if you will obey him, I promise you, your life will never be the same. Let us stand. He touched me. Oh, oh he, he touched, touched me. me. And, and oh, the joy that floods my soul something really happened and now I know he touched me and he made me whole we'll sing I met this blessed Savior Since he cleansed and made me whole I will never cease to praise him Shout it while he turned a tear. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Won't you come? Won't you come? If you have a great need, bring it to Jesus. Don't, don't sit at home and let the devil talk to you and say no one cares. Let me tell you, Jesus cares. You need another touch. That's why we come to church, so we can meet the Jesus that will reach out and touch us. Come on, church. Get to these altars. Praise God. Tell him, Lord, I've got need in my life. I, I know you move with compassion. I've used my faith. I've done everything I can with my faith, God. Now, on the basis of your compassion and your mercy, God, will you meet this need? And he oh, says, he I will. Me. I will. And I will. Hear him say it. I will. I will. I cleanse that leper. He was untouchable, I touched him. You might have felt you untouchable, but I touched you. I will, I will. That's why I'm here. I came to do the will of the Father. And if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. You've seen my miracles. You've seen what the Father wants for your life. We know the will of God. Jesus showed it to us.